YouTube that you're gonna see here. Everything is old school soul food. My uh, Instagram account is Mr. Old School Soul Food. But please go subscribe and share. Share this page and share my uh, YouTube channel. Cause like I said, I get nothing much out of it. It's just the joy of helping others. So that's my joy. I think that's all the things for that. Now let's get started. Okay, first thing I'm gonna make, like I said, I'm gonna make blackberry cobbler. It's very simple, very quick. You don't have to be in the kitchen all day. I'm gonna tell you why. This is why. I don't make my own dough. I can, I can make some awesome pie dough. But I have other things to do when I'm cooking. I wanna make cobbler. I might, like I said, I got chicken pie chicken going today. I might have red beans, I might have cabbage going. Pie dough takes about an hour out of your cooking thing. Unless that's all you're doing that day and want to make pie dough, do it. This is the best pie dough in the, on the market. Pillsbury, it, it comes out, you roll it out, I'm going to show you later. You put it on the pie, people will have no idea that it comes out of the store because you shape it yourself the way you want it. I've been using this for years. I quit making pie dough years ago, which I can. I can make awesome pie dough. But I don't do it. It's just a waste of time. That's my opinion. You might want to make pie dough, but don't waste your time doing that. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do, I have some blackberries here. I use uh the day I found some sweet raw uh normally this time of year the blackberries are not that sweet. But I found some today was semi-sweet. If you can't find them sweet, make sure you open them and taste them in the store. You don't want no blackberries that when you're making copper. That's too hard. You want a blackberry that's kind of soft and juicy. If not, if you can't find that, always do frozen. If you can't find the fresh uh, 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 red, uh, blackberries. Okay, first thing I do, I'm gonna put about three cups. This is number one. This is four cups of blackberry. I'm gonna put three cups in here in the in the uh, pot. And I always wash my blackberries off too, and bring, uh, rinse them off, cause it's a lot of, sometimes there's little leaves on it, little spectacles on it, you make sure you wash them off. I put four, four, three cups in here. I keep a cup back, and I'm gonna show you why later. Put that in there. So another thing I do that's very important when I make cobbler. Some people make cobbler, you put water in it. When you make peach cobbler, apple cobbler, blackberry cobbler, raspberry cobbler, don't ever use water. I use pineapple juice. You can use apple juice, pineapple juice. What I like to do when I cook, I like to add flavor to the flavor. Water takes away. You add in water to that, meaning you gotta do more seasoning, more spices. This is already flavorful. It's not as sweet, but I'm gonna put more sugar in it, but this is the go-to. This will make your cobbler taste absolutely awesome. People be wondering why your cobbler tastes different from other. When I make peach cobbler and add this to it, People say, oh, you have the most awesome cobbler. This is a key ingredient, pineapple juice. I usually get this kind, with a screw on top, I screw it back on, you can get it in big cans, you can get it in a little bitty cans. I use this because I make a lot of cobblers, so I get this one, I can use it, put it in the refrigerator, put the cap back on, and, and use it as I need it. Okay, like I said, I'm not gonna measure this because I can hide, but you're looking at, you go on my Facebook page, and you'll see the complete recipe, I'm saying it's like maybe three cups. So we're gonna put that on. Cut the fire on there. You know I'm cooking this kind of pot. I'm doing this today so y'all can see, kind of see it cooking. I have another pot, I call it my cobbler pot. I use it only for cobbler. It's all beat up and things, but I love that pot. I've had it for like 10 years, I love it. But I'm gonna use this one today just to kind of show y'all, I mean, where you can kind of visualize what it is. Okay, now, as that's heating up, you don't have to wait until it boils. You can add in these other grease. I got, uh, I'm going to use a, a half a stick of butter. Make sure you, and this salted butter too. That, when you use salted butter, a lot of my recipes, I say butter, I use salted butter. If you use salted butter, you can pretty much delete the salt in the recipe because the butter's enough salt in the butter. I kind of cut it in little, little chunks like that. About a tablespoon of vanilla. Then I got cinnamon and nutmeg mixed together already. And put that in there. And you're gonna let this come to a boil. Like I say, this doesn't take long at all. Very simple. And you're gonna keep this butter out because you're gonna use some of it to put it on top of the cobbler 
after it get, after it, uh, after you put the uh, topping on it. Then I add my sugar in there. It looks like a lot of sugar, but the pineapple juice is sweet, kind of sweet. But the berries, I put that much sugar because like I said, the berries is not really, really sweet. They're okay, but they're not up to my to my liking. So I put it a, a little bit extra sugar. It, like I said, always taste your berries. In the summertime when it's berry season and they in season, you don't have to put as much sugar. But uh, this time of year, right in the spring, in the end of the spring, heading into the summer, they're not as sweet. So we're gonna let that heat up. And that's heating up. And that's heating up. We're gonna get our casserole dish. I always use this in my cobbler. I call this my cobbler dish. I only use this for cobbler because it's big and deep, and this goes in here perfectly. In there. I sprayed this. Because sometimes I see if you put the crust in there, if you don't have a good casserole dish or pan, it literally sticks. So I always spray this before I put the crust in there. So you can see it's spraying already. Now, this is a secret ingredient that nobody knows. It's a secret between us. A secret to my cobbler. I'm going to keep one over there. Just, I'm going to put the bottom crust in already. While it's heating up, I'm keeping an eye on this. This doesn't take long to heat up. Now in this glass casserole, in this uh, Pyrex pan, I don't know how long, but in my metal one, it doesn't take long. So like I said, I don't usually make it in this one. I'm only doing it today, just to so y'all can kind of see how it's coming along. Okay, while that's doing that, let me get my pie dough out of here. This is so easy. So, so easy. You know how many times I've come home and, uh, on cobbler, I make a cobbler in less than an hour. People think cobbler takes all day. Okay, this here is very simple. Just unroll it. Roll it out like that. Look at that, just like you've been making pie dough all day. Nobody knows. Then you take it. And that's what the, uh, when you spray your pan helps too, because you can maneuver it around. Then I put the bottom crust in here like this. Also, uh, another thing, I already got my oven up to 350. I already preheated my oven, so make sure you preheat your oven 350. Most of my recipes are cooked on 350 degrees. See how that is? I put the bottom crust in there like that. I always got to have a bottom crust. That's, that's what makes you copper, the crust, I'm telling you. You don't have a good crust, it don't matter what, how good this is. The crust is not on point, the copper is not going to be on point. Okay. That's heating up. Okay, another thing I do while it's heating up, I'm gonna already make a slurry. A lot of people don't know what a slurry is. All it is is cornstarch with water. So this is what's gonna thicken it. So while that's boiling and getting heating up, when it comes to a boil, I have my slurry already made and I just add it into it. Use this, I use a couple of tablespoons of, of cornstarch. Sometimes I might have to add a little bit more to it, depending on how much liquid it is, is in there that you thickening the thickening point. So you got the cornstarch here, what you do, you add a little water to it, stir it up there. Okay, I'm reading so many comments here. I can't believe it's 141 people online. Wow, it's crazy. I wish I could get that many in my chat room on Friday nights. Y'all missing out. People that don't come to my Friday night uh, online session, you get a lot of information there that you won't know any time else. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll show you the brand again on the pie dough while that's heating up. It's Pillsbury. Pillsbury, that's the name of the pot though. But this video, I'm gonna leave online, actually, when I, you like to delete my live videos, but I'm gonna keep this one up so y'all can go back and kind of take notes if I'm going too fast. So, uh, yeah, Pillsbury, to answer your question. Like I said, I can't answer questions and uh, cook at the same time. Oh, you like my Dutch oven? I have three of them. This is a small one here. I keep it here. I was gonna make some uh, some cabbage earlier, but I kind of changed my mind. It's 
like a lazy, gloomy day here in Katy about the rain. So it's a good day for peach cobbler and chicken fried chicken. And this almost needs to come to a boil, okay. And when it does come to a boil, I always let it boil maybe five, six minutes and let the berries kind of pop up. While I'm waiting on that, now here's the berries that I put aside. You're gonna put these in here. The reason I do this is because when I boil this, a lot of the berries break up and turn to mush, which I want to, to get that nice blue color. And then you have some in here, see that? To give you that berry look in there. So you don't want to cook them all up. So I always hold some to the side. And peaches, and peaches, I don't do that same thing, but peaches doesn't break up as much as uh, berries. Like I say, this is taking a little bit longer than it usually do because uh, I'm using a different pot here. I'm using my Pyrex uh, thing, which I very seldom do. This thing should be boiling already. But while it's doing, I can be answering some questions here. Let's see here. Hey, Karen, Friday nights at 8, p 8 p.m. I try to come on at 8 p.m. and do a, you know, a Facebook Live in my office and just answer questions. I usually on for an hour, but last night I stayed on for two hours because everybody was asking questions, which is good. I stay on as long as y'all need me on Friday because I don't work the next day, so I don't have a set bedtime. Uh, Teresa from Katie, all right. I also like to make sure this has enough sugar, which I know it's doing butter and, and nutmeg. So I like to taste it. Oh, wow. That is good. Enough nutmeg, enough sugar. Maybe too much sugar. And uh, enough cinnamon. Put the top on that and the boil it. It's almost to the point where it's going to boil. But again, all my recipes that I'm do on Facebook Live cooking, it's on my page. I make sure I don't cook nothing that's not on my page. Well, y'all can always go to the uh, to my website and see the re actual recipe ingredient. But I think it's also good for me to actually see me do it so y'all feel comfortable when you do make the recipes. Let's see. Charlotte, North Carolina, Montgomery, Alabama. Let's see. Joel, what's up, Joel? Joy on in the house. Let's see here. Indianapolis. Huntsville, Texas. Wow. That's down the street. See, want, it's coming up to a boil, but I want to boil a little bit more to kind of make them berries pop. Not pop, but I want to kind of break them up to give it a nice uh, purple color. Right. right. You see that heating up? See, live videos take longer than my regular videos because I can always edit out things to make it shorter, but y'all bear with me. There's no trace, there's no printed recipe. I don't have, I need to get my website set up where you can actually print the recipes out. But um, for now, you just have to copy and paste and print what a lot of people do. So bear with me. Once I get my cookbook out, you can actually, you won't have to print anymore. You can go to the cookbook and get it. And the people didn't watch last night, my cookbook should be out. My publisher, I talked to them Thursday afternoon. Cookbook should be out no later than October. Early the end of September, no later than Halloween. So, to be ready for the holidays. So that's just some information that people need. I shared last night, but people didn't hear it. There wasn't online. No, I'm not going on tonight at five. <laughs> tonight is a uh, Golden State <laughs> and Portland game. So, <laughs> I'm watching basketball tonight and eat some blackberry cobbler and chicken fried chicken. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's heating up. Now I can add my slurry. You want to stir it back up, make sure it's all incorporated again. 
See that? And the reason you make a flare is you don't put the corn, just dump the cornstarch in there like this. If you do, you're gonna have nothing but lumps. You have a big clump of lump. You're just gonna ruin your filling. Okay. You're gonna pour that in there. When you pour it in there, make sure you're stirring it. And this is what's gonna thicken it up. See that? Now, you need to bring it back up to temperature to give the cornstarch its actual thickening to see actually how much it's gonna thicken. I might have to add a little bit more. We'll see here in a second. Does the bottom crust get done? Oh yeah, the bottom crust definitely gets done. People doesn't, people be apprehensive about putting the bottom crust, they don't think it gets done. It gets cooked, it gets done. Especially in my casserole dish. Austin, Texas. Like I said, I never made it in this pot before, but it's sticking it up. I might have to add a little bit more cornstarch to it. Tennessee. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more cornstarch to this. It's not quite up thick enough to my I'm thinking that's like three tablespoons for this. I'm not skinny at all. I need to lose like 30 pounds. I eat all the time, but I'm not, believe me, I'm not skinny. I'm, because I'm just so tall. I'm six foot two, so that makes me look skinny. But, you know, I'm not that skinny. And I eat a lot. I eat too much. Okay, we put a little bit more cornstarch. This should take it to the next level here. And the thing is, you want it more thicker than you actually think because when you put it in here with these other bags, which has a lot of liquid, it's gonna thin this out as it, when it goes in the oven. Oh yeah, it's thickening it perfectly now. Look at that. Oh yeah. Look at that. I'm gonna cook that a little bit more. Yeah, cook that a little bit more and we're gonna pour it in the thing here. We're gonna finish it off. We'll put it in the oven. And we'll get on to the next item. <laughs> That's funny, Matthew. Funny. Okay. Now this stuff is ready. And another reason, reason when you know it's ready, this thing starts to pop on you. See that? Look at that. That's ready. See that? That's thick. See how thick that is? How long did that take me? Took me longer than usually this this little process shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. But like I said, I did it in the Pyrex sticks, so it took a little bit longer. Okay, now next step is what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, pour it right into the to the berries that you have in the thing already. Pour it in there. Look at that. Pour it all in there. Fill that up. Look like I did that before, huh? Okay. Get this out the way. Now we're gonna put the top crust on. Now the top crust you can do many ways. I like to uh, do the crisscross method. works best for me, take the dough out of there, my secret homemade pie dough. Get it out of here. Okay. Roll it out on the counter. Put it out on the counter here. What I do, I start from the end. I put the little ones at the end here. Put the other the little one on the end. That's where I do mine. You can do it however way you want it. It's no, you don't have to be fancy with this. I 
cut the another one. I go this way. Cut the other one on this side. Go this way with it. Then I cut this strip here. I mean, every time I do it differently. Because however I feel or how big of a hairy I'm in, I just want to put it on there. Get as much dough as strips you can on there. It's not science. It's not a rule to it. We just put the dough, top dough on. And you can just, just roll a whole dough on if you want to without cutting it in slits. I like to cut it in slits because I like to see the bubbling through it. See that? The one on there. One here. Cut these two in half. There you go. Okay. See how easy that is? Now the last step, we're going to put some butter on it, on the top. I like to put butter slips on mine. Sometimes I break the butter up, but this butter is so soft right now, it's room temperature, so I can't break it up. So I just put it on there like that. Just like that. Is everybody with me? Am I still on live? But I don't know, I'm not looking at the camera. Y'all y'all with me? That's a lot of butter, huh? That's that Paula Bean type butter. I love me some Paula Dean. Anybody know me? I love me some Paula Dean. But we'll talk about some other story. Okay. After you put the butter on, I put a little bit more sugar on top. You can put cinnamon on there too. But today, I'm going to just put the sugar on there. Put the little sugar on top. And that's it. And we're going to get a pan. Hold on. And I don't have out. Give me a second. Sometimes it has, so that's just to save it from when it's boiling over in the oven. And just put it in the oven. I'll check back later when it gets ready. Okay, now we're going to move over to the next item. Now, y'all see how quick and easy that was? Actually, it took, what, 30 minutes? But it shouldn't take no more than 15 minutes, actually. It shouldn't take that long, but... I said, I was looking at the thing over there and chatting with y'all. Y'all actually doing the whole thing without hesitation. Okay. Okay, now, I'm going to do the chicken fried chicken now. While that's, while we waiting on that uh, cobbler to get ready. I got a black and skillet here. I love my black and skillet. I have three of them. We're going to heat the oil up. Let it be getting hot. I got vegetable oil in this thing. I'm gonna grab my chicken stuff here. Okay, I got some stuff here. We're gonna knock this out right quick. This takes no time at all either. No time at all. Okay, very simple. I got three chicken breasts here. Um, these chicken breasts cost me $5.50. I got them on sale. This is about uh, maybe a pound and a half of chicken right here. This one breast right here, when I finish showing you how to do it, you can feed two, three people off this one breast, the way I cut it and the way I process it. So you're looking at two, four, six, you probably can serve eight people with this chicken right here for, for dinner, for your whole family, for six bucks. What can you get that? What can you do that at? Okay, first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna, Cut this chicken, nice this chicken. Put this over here out the way. I don't need the milk yet. Let me see these comments here so I can stall time here. Bonus. Oh, and I'm going to change the chopping board. No, because what it is, I have sanitation here, and I have sanitation liquid here next to me all the time. That's another thing I do. I always have a sanitation liquid next to me where I can wipe my board down, clean my hands. That's another thing that's very important. 
always have, I always have a soap and sanitation liquid all the time. I'm always wiping and cleaning as I'm cooking. See that? Always. Always doing that. And I have a sanitation here too that I keep all the time for my hand. So yeah, it's very important. Yeah, you won't get your family sick. But anyway, back to what I was doing here. Okay, we're gonna take this chicken breast. Whenever you're working with chicken, you have to be very careful, speaking of sanitation, so you don't want to get nobody sick. Uh, your family members and nobody sick, you know, very important. Chicken is very, very dangerous. So, get the chicken here. I'm gonna only cook, I'm actually, I'm gonna only cook one piece. It's just me, I'm not gonna cook all this chicken. Okay, what we gonna do? Cut this piece off. I'm gonna slice it really, really thin, the chicken breast. Right? Thin, paper thin. Because the reason I'm slicing it thin, the thinner you cut it, the quicker it, it the quicker it'll cook when you bread it. And you'll see later what I'm talking about. This video I did the other day on uh, my YouTube channel, and people just tripped out like, wow, really? How many pieces I got here? I got five pieces there. All right, I got five pieces there. One more piece. I'm going to do six pieces. I'll cut one more. One more piece here. All right, there we go. All right, I'm gonna get out of the way. Okay. okay. It's very important that you, after you cut chicken or hormone chicken, it's very important because you can get, definitely get somebody sick. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, now I got my chicken here. My oil is heating up. Next thing I do, I'm gonna make a breading for it. A couple of eggs. I do eggs and buttermilk. A couple of eggs there. Maybe, maybe a cup of buttermilk I use. You can use regular milk if you want to. Buttermilk is always when I do chicken, I like using buttermilk. So, okay. Now, we're gonna season the chicken. I got salt and white pepper. Like I said, I like to use white pepper and salt. Grocery salt when I season, this tastes better and clings to the product better. So. Next side, turn them over. Hope y'all can see what I'm doing here. See that? All right. Okay. Now we're gonna bread it here and get it ready for the skillet. Like I tell people, this is the best breading right here. It's the target bags. They awesome. They tough and they good for breading uh, food in. So I'm gonna put a uh, flour here in the bag. Make a couple of cups here. All right. Now, we're gonna do flour. We're gonna do dry wet, dry. I'll double bread my chicken, see if y'all with me. You can soak, do I soak my chicken in uh, milk? You can soak your chicken, you can marinate it. I marinate my uh, chicken with the bone, but this here is so thin, it, it doesn't take much to to uh, to get the seasoning on it. So I don't marinate this one. Okay, like I said, we're gonna do dry, wet, dry. So we're gonna do flour, milk, flour, oil. Or grease, as my mama would say. Okay, take that. 
a little happy dance after we just ran as you shaking it up there. And you put it in the milk, too. Mm -hmm. And then I had six of them suckers. All right. Move that along in there. And you're going to go back to the, back into the flour. Y'all with me? Y'all am I losing somebody out there? If I am, you can watch the video later, what I'm doing here. So, put the chicken back in the bag. You get kind of messy if you're doing a lot of them, but I'm only doing six, so it's not going to be as messy. Okay. Okay, pick it up. I can hear that all just getting really, really hot. Look at this. See? See how hot the oil is ready? Okay. And we're going to go into the oil with it. Look at that. Get that sizzle. Like I said, you don't want to overcrowd your skillet. I can get six in here. That's why I did six. I know I can get six in here, no problem. So, that's fine. There's one more in there hiding somewhere. Where you at? There you are. That's it. We got six going right there. Too bad. I know. Yeah, I hope y'all can kind of see what the world I'm doing. Uh, but. Yeah, I did go to culinary school. I went to Texas State Technical College in Waco. So I do have a culinary degree. I got an associate in, uh, in culinary arts. I do, but I'm self-taught. Most of that time I went to culinary school, they didn't teach me much as my mama did. My mama taught me 75% of what I know, and maybe I got 10% in school, and another 15% I got after I got it actually into the industry and working with different chefs and stuff. But yeah, my mama taught me most of what I know, this kind of cooking. So, this is cooking, I'm gonna get the pan here, we're gonna put it on. Like I said, I have to, when I do, put, I'm gonna put this in the oven and kind of finish it off. And while I have it in the oven, I'm gonna make the skillet gravy. So I like to use a sheet pan, a little rack. You find it, I got this thing here, but don't come with a, another pan, I kept it. I use it so the kind of the chicken can sit on it and doesn't stick to the pan. While it's cooking, I'm still going to be asking some questions here. Okay, let's see what happens. 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 Okay, let's see what Okay, chicken here is uh, going right along. The cobbler, man, if you can smell that cobbler, smell the cinnamon and nutmeg in my kitchen right now, it's awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the chicken over. Nice golden brown. Look at that. Y'all will see how golden, you probably can't see from the video how golden brown it is right now. When I take it out, you'll be able to see. on my Facebook page, the Old School Soul Food uh, YouTube channel and uh, 
Twitter. I do tweet. I tweet out pictures a lot too. Oh, uh, Teresa, you're funny. Hello, Diane. <laughs> funny. No, I'm not really. I'm completely single, yeah, but I'm not taking off this fucking wine, but yeah. Just me. Me, myself, and I. Okay. All right, we're going to take this out of here and put it on the pan over here. Let this drain, and we're going to put it I'll put it in the oven. While it's in the oven, we're going to make our gravy. I know I might can see this here. See how quick that was? See that? Look at that. See how quick? That was awesomely quick. Now I'm going to put it in the oven and let it cook some more because it's like three quarters of the way done. And while that's cooking off, I'm going to make the gravy. I'm going to make the gravy here. gravy, we're going to take a little of the grease out of the chicken that we saute the chicken in and pour it right into the skillet here. It'll heat up. Also, remember the thing we used to bread the chicken and the flour? We're going to put a little of that in the skillet. Take a little of that. Put that in the skillet there. I waste nothing. I waste absolutely nothing. A little bit more in there. See that? Let that heat up. What size are you making with that chicken? Oh, I ain't making no size. No vegetables, no bad, this enough with fried chicken and gravy and uh, black bread coffee tonight. I don't think I need none of anything else to, on the side. But if I did have to make side, you know, you definitely have to be mashed potatoes. Like I said, this recipe I posted last week on my website. So, chicken fried chicken, it's on there already. So, let that cook while it is. We're going to get some milk. Well, a couple of cups of milk. We'll kind of eye it. I start with one cup and see. But this is very important that you don't pour too much, too much milk too fast because you'll get the gravy too thin and then you have to add more flour and that's just the purpose. So you put a little milk at a time. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more. A little bit more. So just keep working out the lumps. Look at that. Working the lumps out there. A little bit more. You want this to cook maybe? I'm saying, man, you want to cook the flour out of it. Salt and pepper. A little salt there. It's the only time I like black pepper. I like black pepper in my gravy, so I put a little black pepper in there. Oh, yeah. And out there, just a little bit more. Like I said, you can always thin it out as it's too thick. Depending on what I'm making, if I'm making biscuits, I want some thick gravy. But this chicken, I don't want it too thick, but I don't want it too thin either. See, this is so easy. See how easy gravy is? You see how quick it is? Look at that. That's it. Taste it here. 
good. Wow. It needs a little bit more salt. A little bit more salt in it. And that's it. That gravy is done. It took, what, five minutes? And in that five minutes, the chicken is ready. Okay, we're going to plate this one up. Chicken is done. Get the chicken out the oven. Okay. There we go. Chicken is ready. Chicken breast, it don't take long at all to cook. See that? Look at that chicken fried chicken right there. How beautiful that is. Then take the gravy that you just made, took five minutes. Look at that. See? Pour it right on top. Look at that. See that? Look at that. That took no time at all. And the cobbler's still in the oven. That's before the cobbler's not even done yet. And I got my supper ready. Let's check it out here. Go check it out here. See that? Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Put this in here. I'll hurry up later. All right. Okay. I'm going to answer some questions here. Mm. Okay. Put this up here. I always tell y'all. Cake on my counter. I made this one this morning. I haven't even tasted it. I've been busy doing other stuff today. I'm going to check the cake out and see how it came out. I haven't tried it. I haven't even had a chance to cut it, which is very unusual. This is the regular old school cake. Little gaze on top. I haven't even tasted this one. All these uh, recipes on my page. Let me try this one because I think I didn't go by the recipe. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good too. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. How moist that is. Look at that. Stick to the fork. No moist. <coughs> I need a drink. Okay, we're gonna check on that cobbler. So the finished dish, I'm gonna put it right here then. Put the finished dish right here, but I'm gonna put it in the microwave. Already, uh, there you go. So y'all can see it. It's paying out the way. Let me check on my cobbler. I was like 10 minutes away here. So, this is here to put up.
to reboot my system here. Okay. All right. Let's put it on this side where y'all can see it there. I still got a hundred people online, so I guess I didn't lose many followers with my with my cooking, so I guess that's a good thing. I'll clean this up later. I'm waiting on the cobbler. While I'm waiting, the cobbler got like 15 more minutes. So while I'm waiting on that, I'm going to sit here and answer y'all questions and chat with y'all here online. Maybe eat my food here. Oh, y'all, I hate to do that. That's so rude. That's so rude here. Okay. You have smell a pigeon. If you have smell a pigeon right now, you smell the cinnamon and nutmeggy blackberry cobbler right now cooking it up. Stuff smells good. And I got my bowl ready when it come out. I love this stuff. I eat it hot and cold. I eat it hot the first day. I put it in the refrigerator and I eat it just right out the refrigerator cold. I don't even heat it up. It, it tastes good like that. I eat it like a pie. What kind of butter do I use? What I was gonna say, as long as it's, I get the cheapest salted butter, it is butter generic to me. All of it works the same. Ice cream. I don't like cobbler with ice cream. I think ice cream ruins anything you put on it. I like ice cream, but I don't like it on type of no cake or no cobbler and stuff like that. I think it just takes away from the it, 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 it wet, wets it down. I just don't like it. This is my opinion. I don't like ice cream on cobbler. Now, y'all wondering how to, I guess people over here that got in late wondering how I cooked the chicken so fast. The key is I cooked it fast because I cut it so thin. And chicken breast doesn't take long to cook. It cooks very quickly if you if you uh, cut it thin. And the key is also don't cook it too long. You dry it out and make it rubbery and tough. You can see how uh, uh, tender this chicken is when it come out. The whole process took 15 minutes from beginning to end, chicken and gravy. You can do that in your sleep. It's no big deal. I don't, I don't think I'm going to chop. But those judges on there are rude. So I don't like no chop. I don't like the judges on there. I think they're really, really rude. <laughs> Yeah, I love my cut and cast iron skillets. Wow, it's 115 people. I'm going to try the chicken now. Oh, Betty, you can do it. All my recipes are simple. And practice makes perfect. I mean, the first time I made the cobbler, I made it too thin. It was like water when it came out of the oven. I didn't put enough cornstarch, which I did, but I, I didn't acclimate for the liquid in the fruit that I had put in there. So it thinned it out like water. But every, and you even make mistakes. You try to throw it away or eat it and make somebody eat it and do it again. The more you practice makes perfect. Anything you're cooking is, I'm still learning. I'm still getting in the kitchen some time and learn. But one thing, one thing when I get in my kitchen, I say I'm going to come in here and make two items. And I wind up making six. Sometimes I just get in a groove in the kitchen because I'm in my comfort zone in the kitchen. I just start cooking up stuff. Then I tell my neighbors, okay, y'all want this, this, and this. So, uh. But sometime in the summertime when the kids are out of school in the neighborhood, they know my house is the, they parents know that my house is always giving them things that they want this. So, and they, I pull up in my driveway, what, Mr. Williams, what are you cooking today? Well, I don't know. I'll let your parents know. So, yeah, I'm just one of the most popular houses on the block. <laughs> yeah, peach cobbler, that's my favorite cobbler. Favorite dish to make. Ooh, that's hard. I make, I like all kinds, but I barbecue is my passion. I love barbecue brisket, ribs, and chicken. But I guess, like I said last night, I guess smothered chicken is the best thing in the world. Cause you like, smothered chicken with white rice, a gravy, and some cabbage. That's all I. I mean, give me that, and I'm in heaven. So I guess smothered chicken. I guess is the best thing. I love it. <laughs> Need me as a neighbor. That's funny. That's funny, Jennifer. Yeah, I have a uh, old school uh, rolls on my website, and it, it, it's not easy. And I mean, rolls take them. It's easy, but it's 
whenever you're working with yeast, it's not fast. It's, it's not a fast way to do it. So you gotta let the yeast rise, and you gotta uh, 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 roll out the dough, form whatever you're doing, cinnamon rolls or dough, and then let it rise again, and then bake it. So it's a process. So that's the thing about that. Recipe, all my recipes on uh, this Google, like I told y'all last night. Y'all need to come to my Friday Night Live session. You get so much education and ask a lot of questions. Uh, what was your last one? Oh, recipe. Just just go old school, so old school peach cobbler, old school blackberry cobbler on anywhere, on any search engine. Then the recipe will pop up. Yeah, my food is getting cold. That's why I got the microwave here. And I got some gravy. Don't worry. Right, if somebody said put it there where y'all can see it. So y'all didn't see it, I'm going to put it in here where it don't get too cold. Because I'm going to eat later on this afternoon when the game come on. That's my basketball game. When I'm watching my basketball game, I'm going to have chicken fried chicken and uh, some uh, blackberry cobbler. That's, how I, that's my evening plans. I like ham hocks, uh, mainly when I make uh, turkey neck, I love ham hocks. I love it. You can't beat ham hocks. Yeah, black eyed peas, you, bacon grease blending anything is awesome. You can put bacon grease on a piece of bread, which I'll eat it. I mean, bacon grease is, is the thing. I mean, shoot, I love me some bacon grease and everything, southern I cook. So, yeah. Website, please. I'm gonna do Friday night. That's what I'm gonna do when I do my Facebook live session. Anytime I talk about my Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, I'm gonna pin it on all a couple of times, two or three times that on on the feed here, so y'all can have it. So like I said, it's very simple. Old school soul food. You go in the go in the search engine, just type up go old school soul food and see what comes up. It's gonna be a lot of my recipes. Mine will be the first thing to pop up. So I'm not hard to find. If you turn to your left, hold it. <laughs> I just put it in the microwave. Y'all, y'all y'all didn't see this? The cobbler is not ready. See that? See that? We'll go right up to the camera. Y'all see that? <laughs> okay. I'm way too techno. It's not really techno. If I can do it, in, I'm not very computer, all this fancy stuff. Saying I'm learning as I go. But it's just easy. Just, that's why I say it's easy. Just type old school soul food. Like I said, Friday night on my feed, I'll, I'll uh, put it in my feed here. and uh, So y'all can just click on it and find it and then save it. Fried green tomatoes. I know that's right. Next, I need a food channel show. Yeah. I don't know. That's a more work food challenge show. Maybe one day. Carry it. Wait to see your cookbook. Yeah, I can't wait to. I'm excited. I really am. That's been a dream, lifelong dream of me getting a cookbook. And everybody, you should get a cookbook. You should get a cookbook. Okay, I'll get a cookbook. I just put it on. So, my dream is come true. Like I tell people, follow your dream. You got a talent, follow it. Check my cobbler here. I can smell it, man. One more minute. About five more minutes. When I can really, really, really smell it, I mean it's almost ready. That's just like a cake. When you can tell when a cake is almost ready, you can really, really smell it. <laughs> Favorite memory of cooking with my mom. You know what? That's the interesting question. My favorite memory is when I wasn't even in school. I had to be like four or five years old. I wasn't in school yet. And my mama used to work in a lot of restaurants. You know, at the time, it wasn't a lot of, for her, she didn't have a, she never finished high school. So you can only get restaurant, cafe jobs. She said cafe jobs. So she did a lot of cooking in cafes, which was an advantage for me. So it worked out. But anyway, 
I remember sitting on a, I don't know if y'all, of course y'all have any food in you don't remember. Pickles used to come in green buckets, those sliced uh, hamburger deal pickle buckets. They used to sit in, the, uh, come in the green bucket. I remember to this day, like it was yesterday, sitting on pickle buckets, watching my mom cook in the back in the restaurant. Just watching her cook, like, wow, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool, but yeah. That's probably my favorite memory of my mom growing up cooking, not even at the home, just watching her cooking and he working, slaving in the kitchen in the restaurant for us, watching on the pickle, but nothing I can do because I was too small. And I said, man, that's man, that's pretty cool to do with this, to do this for a living. And as the wheels rolled by, I just kept cooking and cooking. And like I say, people, I love cooking. I've been doing all my life, and every job I have requires cooking. And it's like I never worked a day in my life because I love it. I love going to going to work in the morning because I'm doing what I love to do. When I come home and get in the kitchen, like I say, I'm in my own world. I'm on nothing. I don't care what's going on out in the world. Politically, uh, socially, it doesn't affect me at those two or three hours I'm in the kitchen. I'm in my own world. So, yeah. Cooking is just a, it's not only a passion, it's just a getaway. That's why I encourage people, get in the kitchen and cook. It takes you away from a lot. Get your family involved, your kids and stuff. It's like to be a whole family affair in the kitchen. But I ramble on when people ask me questions. This is my Saturday. This is my first live cooking. I'm going to try to do at least two a month, sometime once a week. Next weekend is Memorial Day weekend, so that's a lot of barbecuing next weekend. But I might do one. I think I'm doing a fishing trip next weekend, but I don't know. See, but every Friday night, 8 p.m. Central Time, Texas Time, I'll be doing a, a session like I'm doing right now with y'all. Information, giving you new information that's out and things like that. So, yeah. This is my first live. It'll get better. Like I say, my angles and cooking angles and organization and stuff, it'll be it'll be a lot better. I mean, just like cooking. I'm going to get better and better and better and work at it. So, y'all bear with me. This is my first video I ever did. What's up, Chris? I got brother, I got one brother and one sister. Now, now my brothers and sisters, and my brother was here, my brother's a minister. He's a, uh, he's a middle school teacher and he's a minister. He's a Baptist minister and uh, 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 he's also a gospel uh, singer. He has skis out. But if my brother was here, he said he don't cook, but he loved to eat. When he come over here, he come to the kitchen, he, he loved my real. My brother is, he's 10 years younger than me, but he's an awesome individual. He always say, Jeffrey, you're my role model now. You're my role model because you're doing what you love. And he's doing what he loves to do. He loves to sing. He loves to play the guitar. My sister, she loves to, she can cook too. But whenever she cooks something, she always send it to me or post it. Look what I made. Look at my brother in pie. I said, okay, sister, you got, you got it going on. Yeah, she can get in the kitchen. She don't cook as much as I do, but she can get in there and burn. <laughs> Lisa, how you doing, Lisa? Warner, Scobo, how you doing? Okay, I'm about to take this cobbler out of here. I'm gonna let it sit up a little bit and cool. Back here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna set it right here where y'all can kind of see it. And I'm gonna move the iPad over here. I'm gonna move this over here. So I kind of, kind of got my back to y'all. I'm going to put the cobbler here where y'all can kind of see it. Okay. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Golden brown, still bubbling. You don't want to spill that on you. So I'm going to let it cool maybe 10, 15 minutes, and I'm going to scoop a bowl up and let y'all see how it is. But I kind of let it sit a little bit so y'all can see. But it's all good. Lisa, how you doing? Good. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're doing good. Yeah, Angela, follow your dream. You should go live. You never know. I started this page, what, five years ago, five, six years ago? And, and encouragement of other people, some of my coworkers and regular friends on my Facebook page, 
So I'm going to do a live stream, of, I mean, not a live stream, a cooking startup Facebook page. And I just did it and got a few followers and 20 or 30 and then 100 and then 200 and then 300. And then a couple of years, it was standing at like eight, 900. And I tell this story and if y'all haven't heard it, I'm going to tell it again. About three years ago, it was in July, 4th of July weekend. I did homemade ice cream like I do all the time in July. And I said, let me post this on my food page and the people know uh, homemade ice cream. I put that on there. Within 20 to 48 hours, my page had went viral. It was just blew up. It went from like 600 followers to like two or 3,000 overnight. And those two or 3,000 went to 10,000. And right now, I think I'm standing at almost 300,000 followers just for a cooking page that I cook in my kitchen. It's nothing fancy, nothing, just regular food. So, like I said, you just follow your dream when you want to do something. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Barbara. Thanks for watching. I wish you was here, Barbara. Sugar Street in the house. <laughs> Sugar Street in the house. Barbara in the house. Thanks, George. One of my favorite followers, George. George been here a while following me. Thank you, Kathy. But y'all don't leave until I dish this thing up and then I'm gonna go offline here. Yeah, Lisa, regular food is the best food, especially country food. Look at that. I'm ready to dig into this stuff. Wow, this is awesome. When I'm looking at this stuff, it's like, wow, I got to have some of this cobbler. All right, see you next week, Nancy. Friday, 8 p.m. I have a YouTube channel, Deborah. There people online that don't know, I'm going to tell you again. I'll keep saying this till I'm blue in the face. I have a YouTube channel. It's called Old School Soul Food. Go subscribe to it. Because I do live, not live video, but I do in-depth 15, 20 minute videos of cooking, actually cooking, that I don't post on the Facebook. I'll share the link, but I don't actually post it on this page. So go subscribe to that channel. And I also on the YouTube channel, when I go to different restaurants and different places around the city, around the, when I start doing different the cities, I will put videos like that that I like. And I'll go in there live and take videos, and I will post that on YouTube. On Instagram, it's just pictures, but go follow my Instagram. It's Mr. Old School Soul Food. If you got a Twitter account, it's Old School Soul Food on Twitter. I'm on all that. I'm going to get on Pinterest, too, so I'm working on that one. That's it. Yeah, you can make any kind of fruit cobbler. Like I said, I usually make the only peach and blackberry. You can make apple cobbler, you can make pear cobbler, you can make raspberry cobbler, any cobbler, you, any fruit that you desire, you can make a cobbler with. It doesn't have to be blackberry or peach. Yeah, anything you want. It's all your preference. Let's say food is different. Everybody has purposes and no preferences. Like I say, I don't like chocolate. I don't eat chocolate. The only chocolate I don't like is German chocolate cake and chocolate chip cookies. Other than that, I don't want no chocolate. I don't want no chocolate pies. I don't want no chocolate cake. I don't want no chocolate pudding. I just don't like chocolate. But everybody has a preference, you know. <clears throat> okay, let me scoop up this cobbler here. Boom, yes. Okay. This should be easy here to scoop out. Okay, you need some ice cream for this, but no, sir, not for me. Look at that. See that? A little bit more. And it's better if you let it cool down a little bit more, but I'm not going to wait. I'm going to eat some right now. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. See that? Hold that up to the camera. Look at that. See that? Wish y'all was here. Mm hmm. The dough is perfectly cooked. Mm. We got 
patty. Very simple. Very good. What is it? 6 15. I thought at 5 15. In one hour, I done made homemade black bread cobbler, a chicken fried chicken here with gravy. I did all that in one hour with talking and stopping and all that. In one hour, I did all that. You can do it. All my recipes are very simple and pretty much quick. So, Go online and you know and do it. Get out there and do it. Okay. Well, I'm gonna uh, get off here and I'll, like I said, I'll see y'all online. Which I'll be posting stuff all week. If I something I need to tell y'all, I'll put it on there. But I'll be on Facebook Live Friday, 8 p.m. You gotta stay on an hour. Last night I stayed on there for two hours. And I might pop on periodically here and there if it's something I need to update or tell y'all and I don't wanna type it in. I might get online. I might get on tonight after the game is over and pop on and just see who's who's online or whatever. If I'm bored or whatever. But anyway, thanks for watching this here and I will post this on I will keep this up, this live video up. So y'all can go back through and review and if it's something y'all didn't catch and I talked too fast. Or you got on late and then see the process of something. I'm going to uh, keep it on my page. You just scroll down and see Facebook was uh, Old School Soul Food was live. So you can kind of check it out. But again, thanks everybody. I love y'all and y'all are the reason to keep me cooking. So you don't, I mean, don't forget that. When I see the comments and likes and shares, that's important to me. So it keeps me motivated. All right. Thanks.